It is 8.30. It's time for the weekly meeting of the Mitchell County Board of Supervisors. We have an agenda in front of us. Item 11 will be deleted for today. Any other additions, corrections? I have none. I'd make a motion to approve the agenda as amended. I will second that motion. It's been moved and second. Further discussion here and none. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carried. County Attorney General discussion. I'm sure it's the, the, the one we've been looking at with the amendment and then the amendment and then maybe this is about what the second or the third amendment. I um, signed it a couple weeks ago and then they amended it again, right? Yeah. I guess. It had more to do with budgetary, didn't it? Than I think so. With, uh, it wasn't in the next year's budget or something. Yeah, I haven't had a chance to look at that. You can make your standard motion to approve it. Or I mean, subject to it. Yeah. Yeah, I'll make it. I'll take a look at it sometimes. I'll sign the motion. It's been moved and second to uh, approve subject to uh, county attorney approval. The amendment to the DHS cooperative reimbursement agreement. Further discussion? It's just the same thing we always do with the Boyd County DHS. Oh, it's different. Okay. That's the child support recovery. Oh, okay. And then there's eight counties that are involved with it and they keep it. Each county does it for a three year period. Oh, all right. right. All right. I remember now. Further discussion? Hearing none, Morrell. Aye. Copeland. Aye. Block. Aye. Motion carried. Anything else? Any questions? <laughs> Ask your questions on the trial. That way, it could be done in open court. I guess. I mean, my only question is just uh, with the architects in that. Uh, we're going into another phase here pretty soon, and we got to make sure that we're either under that hundred thousand dollar level of uh, contracts, or we have to rebid. I would assume, wouldn't we? Um, if I true, using the FBH. Well, it's, I mean, if we want to make sure that we we're covered. Right. Yeah, let me check that. Yeah. The hundred thousand dollars doesn't cover everything. In other words, you can spend a hundred thousand dollars on certain things and don't have to get it. Okay. Let me check. It's at the age, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll check. And Jeff Heil was not here last week. His dad had open heart surgery. Uh, basically, uh, I think by next week we'll pretty well have a plan that we're going to be comfortable with. It sounds like it's going to be in that six and a half billion dollar range. Five point one for the courthouse itself. One point four for everything else. Uh, uh, demolition, architect fee, blah 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 blah. Um, I don't know about anybody else's thinking, but I really feel uh, once we understand what we can do to uh, finance it, uh, then we should take however much time we need to take in order to sell this to the public. And uh, before we go any further, we really need to see if we can get this thing approved or not. That, that's my feeling. Uh, I don't know what the thought of the rest of it. I can't see sticking a lot of money into uh, further uh, blueprints and that. I mean, you know, the mechanical, the electrical, and all that, if, if we're turned down, that we don't have the voter support. We need to have a plan. Pardon? We need to have a plan. And under that scenario, you don't have a plan. Well, 
Do you really need to know? Yes, no. you do. That's what that was the big argument the last I stand. You guys don't have a plan, and you want to spend all this money. No, but we we really do have a plan. No, you don't. Because the, the engineers and the HVAC people haven't even got involved with that yet. Things may change around. It might look at, out there at the ballot project at the city of wastewater. That went from three and a half million to four point seven million. How would you? Pay the rest of that, if you know, if you decided it was six and a half million, say it was seven million. Well, now I've got another half a million. I don't think we need to rush into it yet. Okay, well, I want to make sure. I, I, I'm, I'm good with, I think we need to keep moving forward and lean into it, but it's good that we talk to Jeff and get our ducks in a row. It'll be ironclad. This is what it will be. I mean, it's. I think that's my feeling. I don't know anybody else. I'm only one. Yeah, I mean, because I can see it both ways. I can see it yeah. both ways. Right. I mean, we're, and we're we're pretty getting real close for you know floor plan. But the but the but the list final the product, meetings that, that, no. that uh, Kevin Epperly emailed us go all the way to October. And each each meeting twice a month will get more and more in detail. We don't have any detail now. We got a floor plan. We got a floor plan. We don't. What are we using? Marble? Or are we going to use concrete or what? I mean, none of that's been decided yet. So that's my feeling. Stand yep. Well, that's fine. I mean, we'll keep going forward. With yeah, that's what I think. We lean into it. There'll be a coming time when we. This is what it's come down to, folks, and then we, you know. That was the problem last time. We couldn't spend any money on it. Now that's now we can. Any thoughts, Mark? Do you want to share? <laughs> <laughs> Place your right hand on the button. I just think, I think you have to have a fairly accurate cost. Okay. That was the problem. I believe that's what I had heard. And, and I would think at some point in time the architects are going to say, okay, this is And I think we're shooting, shooting for that 165 square foot. And I think they're trying to hold everything to that. But, you know, if, say you needed this extra beam or something, or this need to be, because like Kevin had said, you know, they haven't got the, uh, the engineers and the HVAC people involved yet. <coughs> I'd like to go a little farther into it before we can do that, I guess is what I'm saying. And maybe then we can, if, it, if we can talk to the architects and they can kind of assure us that, yeah, this is pretty darn close, you know, it wouldn't be much more one way or the other, you know. Okay. Get the outside of the building plan. Well, I it sounds like that's what's coming up next. Yeah. Um, anyway, no, oh, I think we're on the right track. Okay. Anything else for the county attorney? No, but I'll think of something in the coming weeks since like you're not so busy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know where I am. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Almost like a vacation this week. Huh? <laughs> That's got a you know, big weight off your shoulders. Then. Well, Sheriff Paver, do you have anything this morning since we got a little time to kill for five minutes for a public hearing? No, I just probably need to update you on personnel matter, but that's probably not for a public hearing. Um, you know, the other thing I guess we talked uh, a few months back about the cell phone issue at, at our office. Our phones are 10, 12 years old. They're out of contract. Um, something to think about, and I was going to bring it up next week at my... Uh, um, report to the board but uh, rather than purchasing new cell phones yeah, several hundred dollars a phone up front cost and enter into a contract most of our guys are using their own cell phones now and I think it would be money well spent and actually some savings to just provide a stipend per month if we can do that um, to offset their use on county time 
do you have a figure in mind? Forty dollars. All right, Travis. I but I'm open, you know, to whatever. Any idea how many minutes a month they possibly do use their cell phone for county business? On the average, I mean, what do you do? I can look at the bills and give you an exact um, figure. For right now, five, six phones are running us about $200 a month on average in usage fees. Uh, Each? No, total. 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 Yeah. But the phones that they that they have are not an updated smart type of phone, so their capability with the phones they their own personal phones is much greater than what they have. So I think it's a good way to go. We're not spending uh, money then to maintain phones or replace them if they get broke. That's all on those guys. Something to think about. Maybe um, if they if we agree to do that for them. I'd like to start at July 1st. Yeah, it's good to reimburse us. Home Health does the same. I'm not yeah. sure what, they're, what they reimburse them. I think we get 10 bucks. Uh, I think it varies for between the nurses or the aides. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we can start lower too, you know, if you think 40 is too much and then just kind of make some adjustments if we need to after six months down the road, whatever you think might be the best way to approach that. But. Well, if they have unlimited minutes. I, I know there's a lot of different plans out there, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but I suppose unlimited minutes is more money too. I mean, yeah, there's different plans and you know how much of it is actually coming big. Right. right. We try to use ours for long distance, you know, rather than put it on the county tab. Mm -hmm. So something to think about. Um, you know, Chris is being held here now, and he'll stay here until we get a judge's order. Um, and much thinking maybe sometime early June we'll have that, and, and then we'll transport him where the judge order is currently being held with us. I think there were six in this morning. Um, Rose has done real well in, in getting reimbursements back. We got a check for over 12000 from Undefendant um, last week, so that was nice to see that. This was persistent on mailing bills and finally that one came through, so that was kind of nice to do that. Still owes us a little bit, and we're going to continue to sell it, send in bills, but we got one check for over $12,000, so that was nice. So it really is a bed and breakfast. <laughs> you look at it like that, I guess. <laughs> I prefer to stay somewhere else. But yeah. <laughs> you finally paid the rent. Scott Payne. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. I got to say, in the trial, Mark did a great job. Him and Denise, they they fought hard. We got what we got, so that was that was good. They did nice work. That's the word we heard back here. Yeah, yeah. we did. You know, probably a few things we do different from our standpoint, from our work inside, but. Uh, Overall, I think it's a fair verdict, and we're moving forward now. So. Okay, it is uh, 845. We do have a public hearing to consider ordinance number 48 to establish policy and level of service in respect of to clear clearance of snow or ice and maintenance of county secondary roads during the winter months. Uh, I will open the public hearing. Uh, County Engineer Brown, would you like to basically explain why we're having the change in the county ordinance? If I remember right, it's due to a declaration of emergency and towing vehicles in a declaration or moving them out of the way so secondary roads can continue to plow. That's the only change that I'm aware of. It changes the maximum fine from $100 to $1,000. Other than that, the times, the decisions, that's all the same. Uh, supervisors, have you had any <coughs> comments, oral or written? I received none. I haven't received any. <coughs> oh. County Auditor Tesh, you have not received it. Does the public want to comment? The 
don't live in town. <laughs> we got to keep our cars off the street. <laughs> Hearing no comments, we will close the public hearing at 8.47. Give us two minutes on that. We had no uh, comments, negative or, or positive, either one. Do you want to waive the first and second reading, or do you want to uh, uh, just hold the first reading? Normally, we, the way the weather is, who knows? Please no. <laughs> yes, I know. I, I guess it's not that. I don't think it's not that controversial. No, it's yeah. not. It's more of an emergency. Moving the way the first and second. Okay, both matter moves the way the first and second readings. I'll, I'll second that. Uh, we're in a second set. Further discussion? Hearing none, Bookmander. Aye. Morrell. Aye. Well, I have a motion carried. Do we have a motion to uh, proceed with the uh, third and final reading? I'll make that motion. I'll second. It's been moved and second that we uh, approve the third and final reading of uh, ordinance number 48. Further discussion? On the appointment here, so we have to do that by resolution of the supervisor who would be on that, would be the designee. I think we'll talk about it when the, the chair is that what we're still going to do. And we'll have to do that probably for this year and then at our organizational meeting in January. And that would just have to be almost have to be a resolution or part of our, part of our, resolution our organization yep. to do. That's the only thing. Yeah, we'll have to have Tony Auditor Tesh put that as part of our <coughs> packet then. Well, we, well, we need a resolution like next week to. Well, once this, we got to get this published first because mm -hmm. it's not effective until it's published. Mm -hmm. Once it's published, then we'll do the resolution. Okay. So, sometime in September. <laughs> no, we'll, <laughs> we'll get it published. Yeah, I know. Next I, week. Okay, yeah. but I would just, you know, we going to pass this, well then we got to do what it says. Right. So, anyway. And once you designate the person, they're designated until the position is changed by the Mitchell County Board of Supervisors. So once it's done, you don't have to do it every year. Right. It's just, it's we could designate the, uh, in other words, designate the chair, so whoever the chair is. Or they designate you. No, well, and if the chair changes, yeah. then yeah. you'd have to designate you have to oh, specifically person. Person. Yeah. That's why I said okay. yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, you're, you're correct, because the chair changes every year. Okay, correct. Further discussion? Morale. Aye. Both men. Aye. Well, I motion carried. Okay.
one key player up there. Landowners. Who? Landowners. Well, you know, it doesn't work without them. I mean, there was cities, there was counties, there was IDOT, but not one land over there. That, and with that stormwater, that stormwater prevention and everything, you, you know, it doesn't work without them. But that was an issue. This was the first, uh, this was their first meeting, their first go around. So um, the response was good from public entities. It's just the first, the first part of the morning, the morning session was really good as far as the education side of things. The afternoon was a little slow in that they gave examples of what cities have done. The city of Butte, the city of, uh, oh, was it Cedar Rapids? I mean, what they have done in their plans, but not all of it applies to county. We don't have <coughs> large cities like they had to show examples of what they're doing. Else, you know, cities could do things like uh, permeable pavements for stormwater runoff and to let it set, it, slow it down, and let it clean itself before it enters the streams. But uh, it was a good, it was a good meeting, and uh, I learned a lot anyway. But uh, the key players, just, you know, with our, with spring planning and everything, I'm sure nobody wanted to show up. So, but it was, it was worth it. <coughs> Um, Where was this at? This was in Mason City. Mason City. Sixth graders were 2002? Some are 2002, some are 2003. I know that we have gotten some we used five. We got used ones in 2009 before I came here. Yeah. And they were used ones. And I don't know if they were 2004s. We've got a, 
a whole mix of 2002, three, and four bowls. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember what those bowls were all purchased at the same time. The new ones were, the used ones we, we purchased, through, was it was three used ones here and three used ones in Orange County. Mm -hmm. But, uh, so, you know, how many, and how many more areas we got? A dozen. A dozen. But that's not a whole No, but that covers the county. You need 12. To we've got, well, in, that, in that 12, we've got two backups. Yeah. Is the old ones champions? We've got two old cats yet. Like really old. Snowball's cat. I think he's <laughs> cat. When I was a kid, yet that was a, <laughs> So that tells you how old that one is. old enough to vote. And the champions, they're, they're getting harder to find parts for. What are you thinking? I'm thinking i got to figure out a way to budget some more equipment dollars into this budget. So we can, and, and, and it's not going to be easy because you start buying even three motor graders at $225,000, $230,000 a piece, and you try to spread those payments out, you're looking, you know, even if, depending on what you can stick into your equipment budget, you're looking at six, seven year payoff. And in the meantime, you've still got dump trucks falling, falling apart too. That's why it always should, I mean, I don't know, 2020 hindsight's always easy, but it's almost, you almost need a reserve fund to put so much money in every year, mm -hmm. knowing that you need to buy new motor graders once in a while. Well, and that's why you just maybe should, I don't know how it was done before, but maybe it's just every year you put a large amount into your equipment fund anyway, and then you know you can keep carrying that over until you need it. Right. But that's not always the way it works either with, with other things that pop up. But well, well, what are these motor graders worth now if you just to trade them in? I never, I would think they'd at least be worth Hundred and twenty depends on trading. Depends on what people want to give us. So that puts it down to about one hundred and fifty for a new one. Right. If you can, but the thing, my thinking is, is I don't want to trade my bulbs off. They're the newest in the fleet. Get rid of the champions. They're the oldest in the fleet, and we can step the bulbs down into reserve. 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 Mm -hmm. You know, maybe there's a way we, if we replace three, we can get rid of the three champions and bring the bulbs down, and then the next round, when you replace three more or whatever, then you take a couple of bulbs, but that's going to be years. You know, the money's just not there all the time. Well, next week, we have Jeff Heil coming. And uh, we're going to be basically uh, discussing, I mean, our whole financial picture, we should be. And part of, uh, uh, again, is, uh, uh, you know, come 2021, whatever, we're not using any TIF at all. Uh, we, we've, we've used it up for 2023. I, I don't know exactly where, but... Uh, That's where it's all paid up. And it, yeah, and we still have how many years left. And so, uh, when it comes to secondary roads, what we possibly could do is, uh, uh, instead of doing... Uh, some of our uh, regular uh, monies uh, for, uh, uh, let's say, a black pop or whatever else, and we would use uh, general fund. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we could use TIF on that, which would free up monies in for, uh, you sure. know. Sure. Using, uh, the, using the local dollars yeah. as equipment and using TIF to to do to do our right. yeah, to do our repairs or whatever. I mean that should be part of the discussion next week. We'll need to, and uh, I'd like you to be part yeah. of that uh, uh, discussion with uh, Jeff Heil because uh, we're in a, we. I'd like to get us in a rotation where it's not six at one time. Maybe it's <laughs> not like the two or he buys a new car every year. You know him. Seven, he's got seven. Well, but there was a. Uh, method to the madness. Right. You, you can we get, get a, a large freebie. discount. Yeah. Well, we got a freebie out of that thing, mm -hmm. so that's uh, even though. Right. But with those champions, you get rid of, you know, use them in your rotation. Right. I think they need to be the first to go. I don't know, though. The old cat. <coughs> and really, you know, really. well, One's got one, you know, one little cat, you know, it, it doesn't, you know, if we've got some little things to do and ditch stuff, it's got a ripper on it and things like that. It's not a High maintenance item anymore. It doesn't get that many hours. Mm -hmm. How many you got? Huh? How many bulls you got? Two. Yeah. Two really old. How much you want for one? 
<laughs> you did. I know there's a couple people want to buy them. Wow. You want one out at the landfill. Right. They right? could dress that half mile road when it needed to be instead of having to. Oh, I can't get, get anything. I mean, I can't give you that or no, no, sell I, it until I get something right. Sure, yeah. Something to think about. You know, and uh, I'm sure they would use it. Last water grader they had out there, the only way to stop it was to drop the blade. That's pretty effective. <laughs> <laughs> Work, it works every time. <laughs> <laughs> well, they used it, but you know, that was the only drawback. And I guess it didn't have much for grades. So, my only option right now is to stick 26000 in the I mean, it's the core alone is $14,000 just for the core, which I think Mark thinks our block is good yet, so we shouldn't have a problem. But if the block's not good, it's mm. another fourteen. dollars that's $40,000. Nothing's cheap anymore, you know, the front wheel assists on these things start leaking and they're a $14,000 fix for those motors up front. But they're good for, you know, if a guy slips off the road in the winter time, and oh, yeah. you can use that to pull yourself or the way these roads are, they're hard and hard right now, and you can get that front wheel assist locked in, that'll help pull you through, but it's an added expense, and it's, you know, it's like most people, do you need four wheel drive in your pickup? Not all the time, but you have it, it's nice to, when you need it, it's nice to have it. Anyway, that being said, um, I think we did look at the, the county home ditch there. Yeah, I was going to ask you. You that. know, we were looking at that, and we're not sure that culvert's got any function anymore. Yeah, I just wondered. I just wondered if they didn't, when they filled that in, that the pipe was there, and that's just the way it was. Yeah. One thing Jim and I were talking about was <coughs> they may want to fill in the ditch to the north, so it's even more, and then taper it down instead of cleaning it out. Something to think that's about. That's an option. Yeah, something to think about. Uh, but did you see what the problem was there? Well, the water I, was the being water had to get pretty high in there. Did that? Is that well, it did. That you pipe know, that, sticks up pretty pretty yeah, far. Yeah. But, but I that, saw that. that. But with that snow and that melting, Oh, I suppose if it's set on top. Yeah, yeah and, and well, it all drained away from the building toward that ditch. Mm -hmm. You could, didn't have anywhere to go. And they plugged it then? Well, he, yeah, Dave's going to put some foam in there to plug it, but uh, the water couldn't get away. See, that, that north driveway is holding at that ditch. Mm -hmm. There's lower than the driveway. There should be. Yeah, we could see where it was. And we thought if, there, if that pipe went through, we could, we could put an inlet. Well, the next best best thing is to maybe grade that filled in ditch to get the water to go around that driveway if you can bring some of that elevation up a little bit and get it to sheet away. But there's that that pot that's possible too to dig down in the pile. You raise that up and it's going to go back toward the building. It's pretty level in there. Without having shots, it's hard to say where, yeah. where the water goes. I can see where it where it builds up enough. It goes around the drive, the north driveway. Yeah, it gets and back up on the. Yard. And then actually, sheet flows back to the yard there into that. Yeah. Swale on the back of the little people. So. Yeah, but I, the ideal would be to have that over and open so it could go under the ditch, under the driveway rather. Sure. So the, the only the so option there is away. There's just, that driveway just acting like a dam. That option. But then the option there is to just dig it up and put a standpipe in it to get that area of water into that culvert and push it out. And there's that culvert, you know, if it's clear through there yeah. somewhere. Yeah. Well, we couldn't see. I mean, like you said, it was half full. Should have gone. Well, the, the break thing, point right? is at that second south driveway. There's the break point, yeah. and the only water that ends up in that ditch is what little comes off the road and then whatever falls away from the building. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it falls to the northeast. Yeah, a lot of it does, but it just can't get away. That was one thought. Jim couldn't remember right. when that was ever filled in, or who filled it in. Did they fill it in? I, I have no idea. It's before my time. I don't know if Charlie remembers any of that or not. Fill in where? Where are you talking about? Fill in the ditch in front of the county care. We did part of it. Yeah. Whenever we had a few extra loads of dirt, we'd dump off. We couldn't see it on the on the south side of the driveway at all. Yeah, that's what I, yeah, I said. We couldn't see any outlet or inlet, I guess it would be. You have to dig down. And it's plastic, so you can't sniff for metal. Oh, yeah. With the detector. 
Well, your option is to dig. Yeah, well, he thought about <laughs> root sticks, too. Yeah. I know. It means gravel in the bank that we've got. We've got a I didn't go out last week and look at some there. publications. With, well, I didn't go with them, but I looked at some locations and talked to, to Dan about some things. Jim, we'll talk about that in a minute. Yep. You got anything for me? I pretty That's much. all I got, uh, Rich, was that driveway out there. Get out of here. Talk to you, but that's uh, Sunday morning, apparently, on uh, number nine, the red corner, somebody missed a corner and, of course, took the stop sign out. And uh, so there's a temporary sign up there with, uh, you know, that's put in a, a old rim. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I have no idea if the state put that up or if we did, but uh, they bring two sandbags, two small sandbags to hold it. Yeah, well, we the one we sandbag did. was ripped. Well, there wasn't enough strength there, so when the wind blew, it blew the stop sign right over again. And I had set it up once in the morning, came back two hours later, it's down, it's down again. Uh, Usually if it's on a state highway like that, it's the state sign. Okay, that. But I'm not saying, I saw a, a stop sign in the yard yesterday with, on a wheel that maybe because it was an emergency, we went out and threw our own out there just to cover it if the state wasn't going to. I can't guarantee that we did it or who did it. But typically the sign off the state highway like that is the state's responsibility for the stop sign. But on, on a thing like that, I mean, still you want to get a stop sign up, but we don't want to sit there on the weekend trying to argue whose right, exactly. responsibility it is. But uh, just to have the boys understand that uh, four or five sandbags would be... Well, when we did 420 from the west side of St. Anne's when we did that paving, we put rods through them in the ground to hold them down too because they weren't staying for the, the, the speed limit signs that we put up there. So, yeah, I'll, I'll let them know that maybe two sandbags and it'll be broken as a week, especially when it was windy out. Yeah. There's a lot of square surface there to the wind. It's going to be windy today, too. But like you say, and I get, uh, didn't think of that neither, but like you say, if you had two rods with... Uh, well, we did that. Uh, you can yeah, that would be better than sandbags. I mean, well, I think we did both. If we rotted them and put sandbags in just in case, then rot kind of... Yeah, the bend on Because you're on a shoulder. I mean, there's no paving, no paving there on the shoulder, so... Anything else for no. County Engineer Brill? I don't have anything else. We're doing good in the county, isn't it? I hope so. Places are drying up and Yeah, they're drying up fast. Yeah. The roads are. No frost boils? I have not seen any yet, you know. I haven't surprised, but I would think by now we start seeing more evidence of we're gonna have to wait three years to see yeah. if this <laughs> maybe they're draining the whole county. <laughs> On the right spot. In those locations, though, I have not seen, you know, you know, this early this spring, everything got mucky on top. But I think maybe driving the whole county in locations I have, I've seen two spots where the rock around is dry and there's just a little wet spot in the middle. That's where we get. But I've only seen two in the whole, and that's, you know, I'm, you know, driving north of the yard all the time on that spot that's always got frost bumps. I haven't seen any come yet. So, I, yeah, it's, it's early, but. Uh, who's the guy that had that idea? Yeah, that that was uh, uh, Bart's. Bart. What well, the, the name? This Ed. No, this it was Jordan. Jordan. Eddie yeah, Jordan. Or Jordan. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this he works out. Well, Bart, I'm sorry. The Jordan fix. <laughs> <laughs> the guy no, needs to have credit for that. I mean, it's yeah. It's like we we did it, and now we don't get the frost so yeah. Maybe we scared him <laughs> away. Yeah, his wife was a Bart's one. Right. Right. Yeah. Correct. I'm sorry. Uh, the soil and water people are here, so stick around, yep. Rich. And uh, uh, I think they got a little presentation to. We got, well, this is a real short one. Uh, we're not going to take all time or whatever. Um, the soil and water conservation district with this Upper Sea River Watershed Management Authority. Um, we have the opportunity to put in uh, a proposal for. There's $1.4 million of FEMA money that's coming through IDED and the flood center for a project proposal on a watershed and the whole kind of the gist of the water of uh, the proposal 
is to reduce the flooding and then the flood center comes out and they do some pre-monitoring, some post-monitoring and they're looking in this upper Cedar River watershed basically from Janesville going up north to the uh, state line for one watershed to select. Uh, the caveat is we put together, the, the district or whatever looked at three different watersheds, Upper Rock, Lower Rock, and what's this? Upload Slough. Up, thank you. Yep. Upload Slough. <laughs> and we actually sent out and sent cards out to landowners because we wanted to know if something was going ahead, if we had some interest with the landowners on wetlands, ponds, uh, some easements areas, and then also we did contact you know, the county engineer on do, is there potential on this to where you're going out all the time putting rock on a road because every time it rains the thing overflows and is there a way of using some of this funding to actually build up a road if we build backwater on a neighbor you know up above and uh, so we kind of put together a proposal uh, part of the caveat of why we're here today is the funding was set up since it's due IDED where only a county or a city entity can actually, up. if we are selected, this proposal would go down to a group in Charles City on the Washington Manhattan Authority, which I think your members are now. They're going to select the watershed that they feel has the best potential to meet the requirements of the flood center. Then a county or a city entity has to be the applicant for this funding. Uh, normally, a lot of times, the stormwater conservation districts and nonprofits can apply. Here it's tied in the wording when they brought this through. So I guess the key item is, uh, you know, if we were selected, we just want to make sure that, I mean, if the board of supervisors were not, you know, interested in looking at this, pursuing it, uh, there's no reason for us to go step two. <laughs> uh, bottom line is, it's, um, and there is, I mean, it goes through the normal deal. Uh, it would have to. Bottom line is my recommendation is you know the council of governments would probably get involved because like all your projects there is like 30 steps in how do we handle I mean there Joe is really good at doing those things and we I know we wouldn't be have that infrastructure we would help with working with the entities on here are the good projects and with the flood center to identify what meets their criteria uh, so I you know I guess. That's why we're, you know, here today. Anything else, Dan or Jason, that I really, I really think of anything, uh, Mister, whatever we wanted to kind of see the proposal. But you know, the deal is, if we were selected, we would be coming back towards the end of the month, and, you know, with we need to file an application that would have to be you know, from your entity here. But we just so. I mean, what's the plan for this hawk? What is the plan? I mean, <clears throat> what, what is it we're going to do? Basically, in there, Jason, I'm going to let Jason talk about some of the items. <laughs> There's a map in there uh, towards the back. Jason, look at uh, this one. Jason, is that is that picture you've got there, is that section 7 or section 12, or on the line? The picture is, what is, what section is it? On 325th Street. <coughs> section. Is that section 7? I that believe so. Is that what, what we're which both these are projects. This one is to build wetlands, to build yeah. farm ponds with the deal that we're going to hold back flood water. And then also we have one landowner that's interested in actually putting a low head dike around part of his farm and actually using part of his farm as the whole water back for I kind of like a hybrid terrace uh, in flood water. And we're also, you know, there may be an opportunity here is if you have some road infrastructure someplace, it could, you know, be tied into that where you could get 100% funding to actually do that. Because this, there's no requirements. The funding can be 100% funding on all, all these projects. The caveat is, is we have to have some kind of flood, have to be flood control type of project. So we're either building a dike that's similar. I'm going to call it a Corville or a Sailorville, where you go out there and the water level is here and the top of the dike is like the ceiling. Why is that? Well, that's the flood. It, we would be building something similar to that maybe there. Uh, there could be something where, yes, there's a, an area where if we had it in grass, it would slow down some water. It could be, I mean, it could be something with some grass areas. 
so that's kind of what we would be building out there. Uh, most of it would be on private land, except for if there's something that we could cooperate with the county on the project. We wanted to include the county because of the funding. If there is an opportunity, we may as well take advantage of it. If it we, and right now, all we've done is pinpointed that these farmers are interested. Rich went out and looked and said, these are the areas that we have some issues, have some problems. Will any of them work? We're in the really beginning stages right now, but we just wanted to identify uh, some of those areas. Uh, there's be a lot of engineering and a lot of other things, just like we have to do some work on making sure we don't, you know, backwater on somebody's land. I mean, we're into those issues. That's always an issue, and we have to make sure. You know, you know one conversation we had too, not to interrupt, but one conversation was building road elevations up to keep the water, you know, kind of back and back a little bit. Thinking about it. Depending on the location and what's there for a structure that's close by. I mean, if it's a bridge, you can't do it. I agree with that. Can't can't wash out a bridge. Yep. But if the money's there and the bridge is maybe posted for a restriction, maybe you can put box culverts in. You can flood a box culvert. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and that, and that could be a good possibility. Uh, and I guess anything with the roads, I mean, we're 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 going to rely on the county engineer to handle that. So. Uh, but I guess the first thing is, is you know, yes, the Soil Water Conservation District, we, we're excluded from applying. It has to be either a city or a county government. Uh, that's just the, the rules or whatever that was was brought out, and that's fine. Does this project have to be submitted today, or does it have to be by noon tomorrow? Because we were talking about that we're, last we're, night at the council. Uh, what it is, is we're going, uh, the, the project, our proposal has to be submitted Tomorrow we're going to give a presentation. Now, if you decide later on, no, I mean, one of those is if we're selected, then we're going to have that. Yeah, no, but I, my question is, do we have to have this into the uh, Floyd County Auditor today? Yeah. Yes, by yeah. five o'clock. By five o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, electronic yeah. copy down there by yeah. five okay. o'clock. Uh, other than making it <clears throat> colored, uh, you probably have almost to finalize proposal in your hand. So I would yep. say 99 percent. Yeah, we just yep. need to touch up some because we don't have much stuff. more time to work on it. Sure. <laughs> the discussion at the, the meeting we were at, Dan, is the cart's kind of before the horse on this, but right. in order to get money, you got to. Right. You know, it's not the perfect planning to do anything. But. Uh, normally, you would like to have more time. You'd like a little bit more planning uh, before you start. This whole thing came about, you know, with about a month's turnaround time. Uh, and. <clears throat> I guess Jason and Dan will tell you that they were probably surprised with, I mean, they, I, would, I said I'd buy them a steak dinner, I, they should have bet me on how many <laughs> applications are people interested in, in that section of Rock Creek for a water or a pond or a wetland. I never expected to have that kind of, because what we have, how many people? Oh, uh, there was like 12 or 14, yeah. We had 12, 40 12. responses all together and uh, there was, uh, what was it, 13 in, in that lower portion, and if we expand that boundary just a little bit, we're up to 22. So, and I never expected those kinds of in ponds or wetlands, ponds. and then a lot of those were interested in other practices, whether it be buffer strips or native plantings that might help and that type of thing. So, but, but um, yes, it is due. We're gonna we're going to submit it today from the district. Uh, and your decision on later on, I guess, you know, for what, you know, if it's selected, and I know there's going to be a uh, proposal from Floyd County and one from Brigham County coming in. We're going to compete very well. Uh, I'm, I'm confident we're going to compete. Will we do final selection in a political process of everything? I have no idea. But we're putting, the, you know, the best proposal forward that we can in the time frame we're working with. I suppose we better have a motion that uh, we authorize the soil and water to move forward with uh, submitting. I'll second. moved and second. Further discussion? Makes me nervous, I'll tell you. <laughs> Well, that was, uh, yeah, it was for me, Rich 
goes that, and then landowners show up. So <laughs> that was our big topic. Yeah, there was, was right. the, the real players weren't there, but you know, I <laughs> before you make your, I, I learned a lot there, and it was almost, I hate to say inspiring, but it was. I mean, looking where we used to be in the late 1800s as far as our land use and what the soil could take, you know. They said back then you could take a six inch rain and that ground would soak it up and it wouldn't run off. We can't take a one inch rain anymore. So I mean... And immediately wasn't the right time of the year for farmers. Right. And farmers no. in that street too. <laughs> <laughs> they admitted until it, it was their yeah. initial yeah. meeting. Even though the weather, weather was bad, right. I mean the farmers are thinking about... They don't even know. Further discussion? Hearing them, uh, morale. Hi, open it. Hi. What? Hi. Here. Thank you, Raymond. Thank you, Raymond. Yeah. And we'll, 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 keep, we'll keep you informed of everything that, that, that's going on. I mean, we want to be above board. So. <laughs> uh, and that starts at noon tomorrow. That one yes. yes. Uh, how long do you think there's? Presentations. If they've only got three proposals, they might be out of there in a couple hours. It, there's a lot of talk about a couple of them might have PowerPoints. That's going to take a little longer. I don't think we're going to mess with it. We're going to have pictures and everything we need in our proposal, and it stands by itself, I believe. So. The only reason I might want to come down and see Larry Weber on uh, issues on uh, the Cedar. Uh, sure. Apparently, he's made some headway on the uh, uh, what he's found out, they must be going to be doing a whole state survey of that, and I'd like just to get a little more information from him. So, mm -hmm. but he's not going to be available until the end. Uh, are you going to be staying that, to, to most of it? Or is it more, it's scheduled to go until what, four? Yeah, four I, I think but they've got till four on the. If you, I well, Mark Hewn you, will be moving it along because he'll want to farm. <laughs> or, if, or if you get there early, I'm sure Larry would be there early if you send him a. a, a Message Dan. Yeah. yeah, I'm guessing he would probably come up early to be with you before the meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could do. I could do so, that too. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, it is 9:30. It's time for uh, our public hearing to amend the Mitchell County fiscal year 2013 county budget. Uh, I'll open up the public hearing. Uh, <clears throat> Deputy Auditor Baldwin, do you want to explain the why we're amending? Why we are amending? Um, we are amending to just to add some money to a couple of uh, different funds. Um, as you look on um, the she, we are amending nine nine thousand physical health, which home health in that. Juveniles in that, and so is substance abuse. Um, 150,000 for mental health, and 40,000 for secondary roles. Um, as juvenile, we had the juvenile case that we wasn't expecting, so that of course we have to amend for that. Um, I think there was a another a case with substance abuse. We wasn't anticipating that also. And um, we did some funding for county care, so we're just doing a reimbursement kind of thing for that, just to take care of that. Um, that's about it, really. It just didn't get me where we need to be, so. Mm -hmm. uh, supervisors, did you have any? Uh did the public make any comments, written or oral? I received none. I received none. Uh, Arthur Carl has been the department heads. Did you have any public comments, written or oral, presented to you? No. Does the public want to comment? I just have a question uh, if there's the money that's for the mental health has been designated for something specifically or what that is intended to be used for. It's, it's actually a, a more of a cash flow issue. The uh, Mitchell County is part of a consortium of 21 counties, and so uh, we just needed the spending authority to move uh, reserve dollars that were here into the collective for, uh, for
for ongoing expenses. So that there really is no significant change to that. The substance abuse, that was some more than one individual, an individual that was hospitalized or? Mm -hmm. okay. Detox. That, that's the only detox. portion that the county is okay. responsible for would be detox for those indigent individuals. Yeah. What do you see as the role of Magellan in the future? Do you think they'll still be that's aside from here, but it does play into everything, the funding? Yeah, it's huge. Well, it gets back to really the Medicaid expansion is the big is a big issue. If there's med Medicaid expansion, the, the substance abuse budget should be diminished significantly uh, because most people will have some sort of coverage. So it's really revolves around that debate. What what will be the expansion? What will be the level of coverage of, of that? Of, of those programs. So we anticipate there'll be, there's bound to be some relief to the mental health budget and to uh, some of the social service uh, liabilities of the county. But it's too early to know. <laughs> we don't even know what the mental health, uh, what, the, what the county allocation is going to be yet. That's still part of the budget debate. So. Any other comments? How large was the uh, change for the uh, housing of the juvenile? I mean, what kind of expense went into that, Barb? Um, Pretty oh, significant, I imagine. Yeah, we're probably, I know I increased the budget like 20000 more than we had, so um, with this trial being over now, I don't know, you know, but I put money in to carry us through hopefully to the end of June and then I'm sure more will come in July and August so I'm sure I don't know if we put enough in for the new budget yet either or not but it's just one of them things you hope never happens but yeah, the, the county liability should end at, at this point I presume right. yeah. mm -hmm. State and state mm -hmm. yeah we will get reimbursed for some of it so. Any other discussions? If not, we'll close the public hearing at 9.36. Uh, we have a resolution in front of us, resolution number 873-13. Second, that we approve resolution 873 13. Further discussion? Hearing none, vote member. Aye. Morale. Aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you, Department Heads, for coming in. Thank you. Yeah, next is uh, Mr. County Hospital Report from Kevin. Aye. Thanks for coming in this morning. Glad to do it. I'll be quick. I don't have anything too exciting, but um, sort of the expect most exciting thing is we're, we're essentially done with our remodel of the hospital. We did have one problem with some workmanship and quality of the flooring. I think I mentioned that last time I was here. I don't recall. So we worked with the contractor to get that replaced. It will be replaced at no cost. Um, so everything's essentially done with the flooring in the hallway, and there's going to be about a six or eight week lead time to get that in. So. We'll be having our, we had to move our open house and ribbon cutting ceremony back to August just to make sure things are finished up and ready to go. So watch for that. Um, we'll be we, we welcoming Tony Johnson as our full-time nurse anesthetist. He is originally from Austin, Minnesota, and uh, is living in East Tennessee currently. So him and his family will be relocating from East Tennessee to join us at the beginning of July. That'll be great. Um, I always working to recruit physicians. We seem to struggle even to get folks here to interview. Um, and that's not going to be unique to Mitchell County with the, all the changes coming in health care. There's a real demand for primary care physicians and a little bit more difficult to find primary care physicians who want to provide emergency room coverage, clinic coverage, and inpatient service. It's a sort of a niche that we're looking for, so we'll continue to look for that. Um, we just finished our strategic planning uh, with leadership in the board, so we'll be working over the next year to 
implement those things, and most of our focus is going to just be on where healthcare is heading, and that's population management and chronic disease management. So we'll be looking to implement some, probably some health coaches, people who will help manage the sickest of the sick, and help with some put some systems and processes in place to manage chronic diseases like diabetes and hypertension and, and um, pulmonary prop issues and other things like that. So uh, we did have in the the big rainstorm month or so ago, we seen some water damage in the basement and um, had great staff there that almost overnight, almost there all night, I should say, and when we were, when we came in early the next morning, they had it all cleaned out. There was a bunch of mud that came through the walls. And, uh, we came in, uh, unfortunately, the water came in into one of our um, imaging areas. And uh, the only thing that it ruined, the only thing that the water ruined was the um, battery power backup for the nuclear medicine imaging unit, so we were quite lucky there. And uh, we'll need to do some structural changes in that area around where the water came in. And then uh, one of the things that we, go back to remodel, one of the things that we do need to do, there's some concrete spalling on the back of the building. And we've had that, we've intended to replace that during the whole project, but we've had to wait for the for the weather to decide it was going to be spring and stay spring, we needed a continuous week of warm up so that the concrete could sort of expand and dry, and we could break off what needs to be done. And then the company, there's a company coming up from, I believe it's St. Louis that specializes in that. So, um, and then I guess the last thing that's kind of exciting for us is we implemented the use of our um, employer or, uh, emergency response vehicle. And so our, uh, our paramedics are able to leave directly from wherever they're at instead of having to go to the garage, wait for the hot ambulance staff to come and then head to the call. So they can, they can um, immediately respond from wherever they're at. And we've seen it respond uh, in route times as, as low as one minute from the time they get the call. So it's, it's been a good thing and it's actually by using it we've been able to help some folks who otherwise probably wouldn't have been able to make it because of the no, that's a little different than the ambulance. Mm -hmm. So they're like a first responder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they're actually, in several cases, being the, the sheriff or the, the police officers to the, to the scene. So, so like, um, for example, Jamie Robinson, who lives our weekend, typically works weekend for us as the paramedic, he lives just right, just north of the country covered, and he's able to leave right from home. So you, you think that saves five to seven minutes at least on that response, and that's that could be the difference between meeting that the response time needed to save someone who's having a, an MI or, or a more serious um, uh, acute uh, episode. And, and that's yeah. equipped with? It's equipped with um, many, some of the things that they have, that ambulance would also be equipped with. with I believe they have an AED, a, a defibrillator, and they have um, oxygen and a a small amount of drugs that meet their needs till the ambulance gets there with their regular supply. And um, we, uh, I don't know if you know or not, but Matt Shook resigned and is now down in um, Muscatine as the county emergency preparedness coordinator down there. Um, we haven't filled his position, but we have as a as a supervisor. But we have we were able to find um, another paramedic who came came over from Charles City. So we're back, staffed to two paramedics, and we're looking to hopefully bring on a third. We put that in our budget for next year. It's, it doesn't really give us any more uh, reimbursement necessarily for the service, but it just expands the quality of the service. The challenge again with that will be to find another paramedic. Um, there's a lot of demand and need for those in, in the state. So. Is there any thought for plans to try to get the ambulance located closer to the hospital or? I wouldn't be opposed to that. Um, I think there's a couple of issues related to that. First of all, um, limited resources always, um, you know, determine what sort of funds you have available for bricks and mortar. Um, and obviously I, I, I'm not privy to all the history, but I believe there was some discussion of that in the past and some pushback from folks or I could be mis misinformed, but I did try and find out a little bit of that. There was some um, 
frustration or, or pushback from folks right around the, the hospital to having that happen because of the noise and the other things related to it. But typically, the, they, they try not to run their lights and, siren, and sirens unless it's absolutely necessary. I guess I don't know a whole lot about it. I'm still learning. But they've really found that that actually creates a, more of a, a safety hazard than it is a health in a lot of situations. So they've, they've worked to only use those as really necessary. So, yeah, but yeah, as we look to move our to our master facility plan, that would be something I think would be important if we could do it. Position, tell me what we set up for. I mean, how many, what, what's our goal? Because um, I'm always hearing that we're looking for positions. Um, if we could, if we could find two more, that would be ideal. Um, we need at least one more to give the three that we have a, a sort of quality of life that's manageable for them in the long run. And obviously we need, to be honest with you, we need to find two um, because of the lead time it takes. Uh, Dr. Ross will be sort of transitioning out in the next couple of years, three to four years. So we've got to, and you know, we've talked with him. If, if two came along, he would look at how his practice is and look at a little bit of an alternative practice style just to accommodate that. What's the problem why we can't find these positions? Um, well, a good question. Um, there's a couple of things. First of all, demand for those types of people are pretty significant right now. Um, that's the first thing. Second thing is most of them are looking for a sort of a, a, a distinct sort of lifestyle and practice style, and that is that. Uh, they work Monday through Friday, 9 to 5 or 8 to 6, and anything that's admitted to the hospital, there's a, at the larger hospitals, there's what's called hospitalists who take all inpatient admission. And so they just call the hospital and say, hey, I've got a patient here in the clinic who's having some problems and they need to be admitted. I'm turning them over to your care. That person manages all their inpatient care and then transitions them back to their primary care provider so there's no... Um, so they don't have to go over and round at the hospital like they did in the past. Um, we're seeing most most of the people want to stay in a larger, more metropolitan, metropolitan area because of the lifestyle that the, their generation wants to lead. And um, so there's lots of things. Well, how many? Well, we can get into a long discussion on this. But we've discussed it before. You know, uh, when these doctors so graduate school and whatever, they've got these large amounts of uh, um, student loans. <clears throat> what, if, what, if, what if some county was to help them with some student loans for a contract to stay X number of years? That would be, I mean, that would be a big benefit. I mean, we, we try and offer some of that. It hasn't been enough to, to um, entice them yet, but if we could get that number big enough, it might be. But if you had the, the number of positions here where they can all have a little better lifestyle, you know, then they, maybe in the end they mm -hmm. didn't say, hey, this isn't a bad place at all. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, we yeah, we're we're open to whatever we're, you know, we could we could have some discussion on that. You know, uh, we're even looking at finding people who are starting their residencies and giving them a stipend through so that they have a more affordable cost of living and have, or more manageable um, budget while they're in school and uh, don't have to incur that student debt along the way in return for a commitment for a few years after. So we'll, um, we've identified some of the folks from the county who are in school and we're, we're trying to work with some of them. Great. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's hard. A lot of them leave the county and choose to want to practice elsewhere for the reasons we just got, I mentioned earlier too. So. Yeah. There's going to come a point when we're going to need them. Yeah. You know, when all of our, you know, everybody's getting older. Yeah. I mean, we we have been lucky in that we found two really great, um, one physician assistant and one nurse practitioner, and I think what you'll start to, what we're starting to see, and we'll continue to see in, in healthcare in general, and specifically in the rural counties, is a lot more of the physician extenders um, instead of physicians. We, you know, Colleen Burns joined us. She's Josh Burns' husband, and then um, Holly Boyd came to us from. She came moved down from Minnesota to Osage, and they've both been good 
good additions. We hope to hire one or two more, but it hasn't worked out yet. Um, Holly has been practicing in uh, Osage, but she will replace Sue Mullenbach up in St. Ansgar when Sue retires the end of June. Anything else I can let you know or anything I can? Does the hospital with the employees have a wellness plan? Um, we are talking about that. Um, obviously, in, in the, as we move forward, the focus in healthcare is going to be wellness and prevention. Um, the, we do have a union, so any benefits that we have, we have to negotiate with them and so forth. So that adds a little more complexity to it. But Dang. we're open to that stuff. <laughs> we have Mike Scare up there too, John. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. what you do? And we're going to be talking about it here pretty soon. Yes, and still Part of the reason why we're going to be talking about it is because we didn't meet our wellness. Uh, it's hard to get people to do what they should be doing. And yeah. I just was curious of how you guys were at the hospital, whether or not there was a plan. Yeah. You know, that's really, a, that's, that's one of the difficulties in healthcare. Um, if you see how our reimbursement is going to change, it's going to be based on our ability to achieve certain outcomes with people who have diabetes and um, other issues related to lifestyle choices that they make, such as diet, exercise, tobacco use, alcohol exactly. use. And, you know, if we don't manage that well and achieve results, we won't get reimbursed for it. There's not any, not a lot of real responsibility. You can't go home with them. Yeah, you can't live their lives for them, but we're still going to be held accountable in our payment structure for that. So. So are you for the Medicaid expansion or against it? <laughs> Speaking on behalf of the hospital as a CEO, we have been very supportive of the Medicaid expansion. We, we gave back 2% to Medicare in agreement for the um, Accountable Care Act to be passed in, in an alliance with all the hospitals in America. And so we will see an automatic 2% cut in our um, Medicare uh, reimbursement. And when, when the law was put into effect, there were three kind of mandates. There's the exchanges, there's the required um, coverage, and then, um, now that I need to tell you, I can't remember the other ones. But anyway, we agreed for the cut. Oh, the, the Medicaid expansion was the third one, sorry. But when the court ruled that the Medicaid expansion was optional and the other two were could be upheld and that the states weren't forced, um, ultimately what will happen if we don't support the Medicaid expansion, that money will leave Iowa and go elsewhere. And we will have seen a 2% cut, so we'll take a double dip. Right. So. Once the drop dead date on that, they got to decide. Well, essentially the first of the year is when it kicks in. So, um, you know, it's been interesting to see it go through the, the political process in the state where the two bodies are divided. Um, so, hopefully it can get work, something worked out. Um, you know, there is, I can speculate what's going on, but I wouldn't be, I don't know that this is you know, necessarily what's going, but I wouldn't be surprised to see this drag on and on, and in the end, someone compromises this out for something else they may want in return. So it's, I don't know if it's being used as bargaining chip, but there is some thought on the, on the, state, yes. on the state level with, the, with our hospital association with that situation. Joe, well, keep, us, keep us in the loop. Uh, <clears throat> these are very good uh, updates. Yeah. And uh, again, uh, like uh, Supervisor Volklander said, if uh, we ever come on to our pot of gold, why, uh, you know, we also understand that getting physicians is going to be very important for this area and the future and that. We have an older population and that's, we're going to have to maintain services in order to keep that population here, plus if we're going to try to get uh, uh, industry to come, uh, uh, your organization is one of the more vital organizations yeah. that's necessary to attract industry. Uh, yeah. uh, the same with recreation, I don't think people quite understand that uh, these are essential purposes for attracting industry, yeah. which and without the industry, we wouldn't be viable either. I mean, it's a very, very important relationship. So. 
That's what I was going to ask, but I think Stan answered the question. Joel, you're suggesting that maybe somewhere down the line, maybe the county might participate in assisting re recruitment. Right, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I think it's vitally important to this county to have, you know, good decisions. And, and then if you don't have enough of them, then you end up with that type of lifestyle that they don't really like. Yeah. You know, or they've always got to be on call, they've always got, you know, all the weekend duty and holidays. Right. You know, yeah. Yeah. You know, well, it's amazing what one physician, I mean, the number yeah. that, that one, and then the second one is over what a normal right. And so if you can help them with their student loans or something way like that for a certain number of years, mm -hmm. it's a win-win for everybody. Yeah, I was in my past job at Mercy, we bring physicians in and and that was the first question they asked, do you pr provide student loan assistance? Well, maybe we need to be talking about so, that. You know, it'd be, maybe we could meet and talk about some strategies to come with that money, maybe through a fundraising effort or something in the county. Well, I don't want to over-utilize our tax increment finance, but again, with the windmill thing, I mean, if we would restructure some of this, uh, we do have a pot of money out here. And, uh, we do. It's, it's a matter of where we want to stick our priorities and uh, 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 and maybe this, this is something again when we, uh, next week when uh, Jeff Isle is here. God, we got a long list. I know. <laughs> well, that's why we're paid the big bucks. I know. <laughs> no, but we can help out that. He's going to be here for a while. I want to live here and I like my doctor close by. Yeah. You know, yeah. And we, we I haven't looked much at the philanthropic route either, and we really, we're going to have to do more with that moving forward to, to have some, pro, to improve our our facilities and, and other things. Well, keep it in mind that we're here to listen, you know, we can be an alpha, I guess, my, my mom for it myself. Right. You know, the other thing is, and, and I know we've looked at the tax revenue for the hospital, you know, and there's been nothing um, in the budget for IPERS, but we hate to raise the tax levy anymore, but if the tax levy were raised on IPERS, you know, and the FICA does not cover, the tax levy does not cover all that's paid. But if, if those were raised, well then there would be some revenue that now is being spent on IPERS and FICA, and it would be, you know, people are paying for it across. But I'm not a proponent of raising tax levies, don't get me wrong, but I mean, People also need positions, right. you know, so. I, how many did we used to have another yet? I mean, we had 11 at one time, right. Joel. I got, I'll, I'll give you that history of the hospital. I couldn't believe all the positions we had. 1972, 11. Yep. Jeez. You know, and, and they were all MDs. Yeah, <laughs> surgeon, eyes, nose, ears, throat guys, and you know, I mean, it's just like, but. Times change. And we even did total knee replacements. I just got that. <laughs> Spencer asked for equipment to do knee replacements, and I, I'm just going through the old minutes. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Thanks for coming. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Good day. Yeah. Appreciate it. See you. Good day. Item 10, approve the minutes. I'll second. Then moved and second for the discussion. Oaklander. Aye. Brown. Block. Aye. Motion carried. Wrapping down to item 12. Meetings attended. Last Thursday, um, I rode along with uh, Adam Shirley and, uh, and uh, Brian Huffman, uh, County Conservation Director, or uh, President. Then we went to Dubuque. Uh, that's where the meeting was held for the DNR, and uh, uh, the DNR was somewhat apprehensive to turning that land over to us, uh, the 14 acres of uh, Pioneer Prairie. Uh, but once we explained uh, what wonderful people we were, what vision we had, and so on and so forth, and uh, we explained that uh, basically. <coughs> Uh, what they were requiring is a lot of redundancy and paperwork. Uh, the commissioners uh, had a change at heart, and uh, we are inheriting a 14-acre piece of land from uh, the state of Iowa. 
Uh, there is one uh, stipulation that if it is no longer ever used as a park, the DNR gets it back, which again, no problem with that because that uh, Matter of fact, in 1934, I guess, is when the DNR uh, obtained that, and that would have been one of the first parks in uh, the state of Iowa, so that's a little historic. Uh, first state park, I think. Would that uh, shelter house been a CCC project then? Or? Mm -hmm. They Did didn't, uh, no. uh, they didn't state, but uh, it very no. well could have been. The, my uncle helped build it. Your dad might have helped build it, because he was a friend of my uncle's, and they just, the community built it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's kind of neat. I, mean, I remember as a kid going over there and seeing the gypsies. <laughs> <laughs> That's when they had the dam, good. too, right? Huh? They, they had the it. dam there then, yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't steal you, huh? No. <laughs> Keep your arms in the car, they'll work and send you home with them. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then last night I had NICOG. And, uh, Basically, financially, we're in pretty good shape. I guess the only thing that always, uh, uh, I don't know really if the word is disturbs. Uh, when we do our financial report, of course, uh, uh, they always have in there depreciation. And uh, to me, we get a false sense of what we really have for assets. Uh, net assets and that when we start adding our depreciation because it's kind of like uh, any building. I mean, if you depreciate over 35 years or whatever the case may be and it was built for to be a 100-year building, uh, it has value at the end of that 35 years and yet again we show it on the books as having no value in, in the, uh, so that, to me that's just a little skewed. But, uh, yeah, it is. Uh, but we don't seem to get any corrections on it either. So, uh, <clears throat> other than that, uh, uh, things were going well at the, the COG. So uh, that was my two meetings. Yeah, uh, I have the Board of Health on the eighth uh, here in Osage. Uh, I have a new board member, Jeannie Watts, has agreed to serve on the board, replacing Dr. Uh, David Beckham. Uh, went over some of the bylaws. Uh, looking at the budget, the revenues are very good. They're over 93% for 75% of the year. Uh, expenses were just a tick over 75%, so things are looking good there. Uh, Amy Krebs back, uh, nurse has resigned, took a different job. Don't like working on weekends and all the paperwork and stuff. Took a job, I'm not sure, a faith home or someone like that. Assisted living, I think. Oh, and updates from uh, NICAO, uh, Lisa Copen and uh, Peg Funk gave an update on the I Smile program here in Metro County. Uh, other than that, it's just some of the budgeting things. Um, last night, I was in Charles City for the Floyd Mitchell Chickasaw Early Childhood Iowa Board Meeting. And uh, took care of a few of the day-to-day uh, -day things, financial report. Uh, we had a, a wonderful presentation from uh, Dr. Lucas Pogmiller, I think that's how you pronounce it. And uh, he gave a presentation about 40 minutes long on, uh, on hormone disruptors and the things that we were we're consuming in our food and, and, and our diets on, uh, that are affecting our health and causing the things, uh, different things like diabetes and things like that. And uh, uh, this was videotaped. Our uh, website uh, producer was there, uh, uh, Justin DeVore. And when he gets the PowerPoint from Dr. Porgamore, it will be on the uh, FMC Early Childhood Iowa website, so you can anybody can watch it. I think on there, um, probably be a week or two before it's up there. Um, of course, the hormones are the chemicals that regulate your entire body. So, started out talking about DDT, and went into PCBs and. The BPA, the, the plastic, should not.
cook anything in plastic in your microwave. And I never thought of this before either, but your dishwasher has high temperatures to release some of the things in the plastic too. So it's cold in your dishes before you put them away. What's that? It's cold in your dishes before you put them away. <laughs> well, you shouldn't. shouldn't uh, anyway, try to stay away from plastic. And different. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> yeah. Well, and in your food, is it, it, it's, yeah, it's virtually right. impossible because every time you open a can of beans or any anything in a can, it's lined with yeah. with that. So, you know, it, it's just. Uh, yeah. it's just well, we're a, saying so. now to not leave your water bottle in the car. Right. It's hot even. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, like all water bottles there. I mean, the water you buy, it's all plastic. Sodas and plastic. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, go to the hospital and all the medicine comes down through a plastic bag through into your arm and plastic. I think it's not plastic, it's some evil. <laughs> not no. yet anyway. One of the, uh, the uh, these hormone disruptors can cause your thyroid, a lot of people on thyroid, he said so many of these patients are on thyroid medication. And one of the things is from that plastic will that cause your thyroid to screw up. Um, there's over 1,300 potential hormone disrupting chemicals on the market today. Um, let's see, there was. Uh, oh, yeah, then that, uh, that hormone they're putting in uh, dairy cows to make it produce more milk. There's. Uh, Canada, Australia, Japan, and the European Union, which is 15 countries, have restricted the sale and use of their cattle because of this. So there's just all of these things. Uh, you know, uh, Agent Orange being a Vietnam veteran, Agent Orange is one of those, and uh, diabetes is one of the things caused by that. So there was a very good presentation. Uh, and, uh, I'll try and let you know when it gets up and running on their website. Those are my two moves. Circuit Court Report, 2023-10 for April. So noted. They're almost paying their rent, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> almost. Yeah. And item C, fiscal year 2014 health insurance and flex benefit program. And a notification just came out of the week about um, increase from what we first anticipated because of our we made a wellness adjustment or experience adjustment. So our new rate will be uh, 581 for single, 1301 family. Originally, I think we had, it says 553, or I think we had 559, and family is 1239, was 1239, so uh, $28 increase in single, $62 increase in the family. So I want to bring that to your attention. Disappointed with ISAC and why they decided to do this now. Normally, we get our rates in December. So that's what we put into our budgeting. And now they come back, it's way too late to change that. Well, luckily we put money in, mm -hmm. more money in for flex to cover this. But right, sense. yeah, we did uh, do the full refund between 8 and, and 11. You capped it at uh, 100, so. <clears throat> So what we had then was a little over a 5% increase, now it's a little more. So uh, we think, will have a uh, conference call, I request I email um, Kevin, or excuse me, uh, Brad, um, and thought so maybe later this week, so sometime Thursday or Friday. Thursday, I gotta be gone. Yeah, so it'll either be Thursday afternoon, and we get morning or Friday afternoon. And this is for the wellness? Or the wellness. Didn't, didn't mean their wellness. Right, we didn't, they didn't meet the quota, so all the money was spent. And people working, and there's quite, you know, what quite a few hours. Shouldn't have, been, but shouldn't have been some of that recognized? Well, you know, it'd be nice. I, 
I'm just I think that's something we need to ask them. I think we need to just opt out of that because we're spending more than we're getting out of it. Well, and now they're not wanting to do any more of the and they want to dump forms. They want to dump everything back on the county. They want, want the county to do the 1099s and the W-2s and, mm -hmm. and their gifts of incentiveness were now become taxable. People aren't happy about that either, so it's really not a gift, you know. Right. Because the other year it was that tax bracket you're in, if you get the, yeah. you, know, you get the 50 bucks or not. And we were talking yesterday, maybe we started looking at doing and, and some folks that work with home health and maybe do a, like a blood draw or having some type of a employee thing if that's going to help what's, us what's with our rates. What, well, yeah, I don't what's know the about that. What, what, what incentive would they have? If you don't, your insurance is going to cost you more. What's that? If you don't, your insurance will cost you more. You'd have to come up with some type okay, of exactly. your, some yeah, type maybe. of incentive or penalty. Or <laughs> my <laughs> wife works at. They have to do their blood draw. They have to do their wellness whole thing every year, or else you pay extra for your insurance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think and wellness and tops is right. uh, something School like that. School has had that for some time. They pay more for their insurance. So, but here, you know, you're already getting the single policy for free. So what, what do you? And well, then they, they just starts charging. Well, they pay well, some. You know, or you that. lose less flex money. Right. That we talked that too. That instead of getting the full benefit of the flex no, there, money, there would be a less. there would be a place. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. good one. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't. That's why I asked Kevin, and that's his name, right? Yes. You know about what they're doing, and I see now they're running into the problem with the with the union. Mm -hmm. I think we've got some wording in our contract with the union out here mm -hmm. yeah. on that too. But, but if those guys, are, you know, if they, if they have a CDL, they're getting an annual physical anyway. Right. And, you know, so. I'm, I'm guilty. I didn't get my annual physical this la last year, but heck, I was up there getting a blood draw for checking something else. Mm -hmm. And so what am I supposed to do? Next day, go back and do the whole thing over again. <coughs> well, I mean, when it's all the same, I mean, that wasn't really yeah, clear. Yeah, I, I know. I got then it had to be done February 28th. Well, golly, our year goes till July, yeah, January 30th, or June 30th. Yeah, so now that it's very confusing. They want to get on a calendar year. I know now they're trying to do that because mm -hmm. we're just going to have a half year for you know, July. You know, and, and some didn't want to go online and put their statistics in. Right, because they felt that was a violation of their privacy, but, it, you know. But that first year when they came and I asked them point blank, I said, is that information going to Walmart? No, it goes to a third party. It's just Right, it, it was supposedly secure, but people don't believe that. And I, I well, no. don't necessarily believe it either. But, but then it's like all the information you get on your cell phones and your... Uh, right, that's all they can, they can go way back. That was on the news this morning. <clears throat> And they, they haven't really had their act together down there at ISAC on this whole deal. They, had, they came up here and reported that we could not get a, they would not accept a VA physical. Well, I go, it's a doctor, you know, with an you know, MD behind their name. Why, why would, you know, so I had a big argument with them and it took a while to get that. So they, Actually, the VA physical is more complete than, than the other ones. Probably, probably is. And, uh, I mean, the blood draw on that that uh, they do and, and all of the checking that... Right, and uh, and uh, then, you know, they didn't have their act together on the uh, disbursement of uh, the gift cards. Uh, some people got two, and they didn't ask for it back. They didn't ask for the second one back. <laughs> and I thought that was really poor on their part. Yeah. And, uh, well, I think we need to just have them have their act together at the other end, and now they... I think they found out how much work it's going to be for them, yeah, so they want to dump it back onto the counties to make us do all the work well. We're putting in several hours already, you know, not just not just the board meeting, but their committee. Yeah, yeah. But the, uh, I know Barb Jeffries and, and Janelle Adams have both put in quite a bit of hours, you know, working on the different programs and getting the payroll stuffers, you know, mailed into the, the checks and things like that. So it's a... So I don't know. I, if, if they can't come up with a better program, I'm just going to opt out because it isn't doing us any. Well, it's just, just a part. It's an expense. Here, it's just an expense. Yeah. Yeah. The problem is they're going to look at our experience, and that's going to determine what our rates are. So experience, you know, 
they've got to have some way to measure whether or not we're trying to take care of ourselves here. And if we're not, well, then our rates are, they're going to probably pick a number out of the air and they go faster than they are now. So, I, I know. It's a but I'm a big believer in getting that. that okay, right, go to that doctor because preventative, because if they can catch you early on with diabetes or high blood pressure, or you know, you may have warded off somebody with a stroke now. And well, isn't our, our physical and, uh, and colonoscopy are, are under, covered under our program mm -hmm. now? So right. it's just a matter of going to do it. I, I mean, I go to the VA, so I don't. I'm not sure what all our benefits are here. And I guess I was disappointed too on the flex benefit thing when uh, uh, I had to go see the doctor here a couple months ago with that, and then uh, they didn't want to pay because I didn't put down why I went to the doctor. And I thought that was really none of their damn business on uh, uh, what my medical problem was. You, you don't go there and just say, hi, I want to... <laughs> Just because you haven't yeah, seen him for a couple years. Doesn't he turn it in? Don't they code it with something, I'm sure. No, for flex, though, you got to turn in your own. Mm -hmm. yeah, flex benefits. Yeah, yeah, it's your receipt. You went. I just say office visit. I don't tell them why I went. I don't, they never asked me. Mm -hmm. I send mine in. And... No, that was just the last, I mean, yeah. started recently, but. Uh, Six weeks ago or so. Yeah, all the changes coming and stuff, you know, the county mm -hmm. doesn't really need any more work. Well, I'm afraid we're going to get more. Oh, I'm, I'm sure there will be, there'll be, there'll be automatic just... stuff that's coming through now. Mm -hmm. Just like this. But I mean, with this extra stuff, they're going to be wellness. I don't think they need to do that. Mm -hmm. so. But I just, I guess I just need to know as far as the budget. If we're staying with the 100 for flex mm -hmm. or if we have to drop it. We already dropped it. We already dropped it last year, you know, from what it was. Mm -hmm. So that's 128, wasn't it? Or, and I don't know if you wanted to explain that employees have to take the hit and everything comes along. But I think going forward, we need to better have a better plan. You know, mm -hmm. they don't want to get the physical, well, then, well, gee, you're not getting quite as much flex then. Well, that's something, like you said, should be brought up right when, okay, get your physical done, and if you don't, this is what your flex benefit's going to be. Mm -hmm. That would be you the know. place to... to uh, yeah, because then maybe that will... Incentive. Okay, what do I got to do then? Uh, Just like show you know, Walmart idea. didn't want to come up this year, yeah. so we can't yeah, end up canceling that. Yeah. Normally, so... No, no, when, when's that conference call? Friday? Friday. Probably whenever we can, I have to email them that. Well, Thursday will not work for me, so no, it's, it's Friday afternoon. Yeah, that would work. I don't think they have available 2.30 to 3.30. Yeah, I don't think that would work. Okay. Okay. Anything else for the good of the cause? I think the cause was good. We should go. <laughs> 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 the prize is fine. And I've been trying to keep in contact with uh, <coughs> uh, the people, EDP, the wind people. And uh, sounds uh, uh, Taryn is supposed to be back to work the 1st of July. Uh, Did you see uh, Mid America? 600 yeah. and 70 yeah. some windmills? And so apparently that. Uh, they're able to get uh, tax credits again because of the, so I, that's why I think we're going to still see something here. <coughs> well, they get that Turtle Creek project done next year, I think. Well, they, but they still had to get the wind, I mean, they had to get the power sold, and, and uh, that's what they're working on. Oh, yeah. Did we have? Okay, we have one next it sounds like you're closer and here it's old. I think so. Bob over here. Yeah. Come Social Services added the three other people, so now we have to approve the 28 million. Right on. All right.
maybe somebody else come along and do it. Yeah. Mark down here. No. No, yeah, that, the windmills, I think, are in. Well, like I say, I hate to always keep on bringing it up that we can use mm -hmm. this and that from them, but honestly, that's 40 some percent of state money coming into the county, and uh, we're really able to stretch our tax dollars by u utilizing them if we can. And, and uh, uh, I think it's really a good program, especially if we can get this next phase. I see they mentioned our good roads in their uh, KGLO tractor ride there. So they're going to have a smooth ride here in Metro County because of the good roads. So. Yeah, we're fortunate. Yeah, we are. I can tell you, we, I guess I probably told you I had a call from a gentleman who used to live in Metro County and moved to Minnesota. He's wondering why they can't get their road fixed. <laughs> you know, number seven from Adams up to Elkton. You know. Oh, yeah, that's... So I had to explain to him, you know, that Minnesota, the state took the money from the towers. Don't feel it's necessary to fix the little roads. We spend it on the big roads. So. That's on that road from Dun Delta, uh, going north Albert Lee. There, you know, Six, 65. 65. And down come the road. <coughs> they had half the road coned off. Here come the machine that grinds the blacktop off the road. And that was being bent into the uh, uh, side dump trucks, and then. A little ways back, come another one, take another, you know, they can only take like half a lane at a time. And then down a little ways back of that comes a sweeper guy, sweeping that all off. A little ways back of that come the oil truck. A little ways back of that come the asphalt truck. They're putting their new They're right all right one big swoop. Oh, well, that's a good idea. I like that. I mean, that. it wasn't, but they were only taking off that much, and I think they were only putting on that much back, but it was on 65, mm -hmm. you know, so. Like 218 out here is oh. they're starting to widen. I don't know if they're, they're putting uh, extensions on the culverts and stuff. And okay, no putting way. some new tubes underneath. But uh -huh. uh, boy, that thing is really bad. I went to Charles City that way last night and wish I hadn't. Yeah, I'm waiting. Man. But they're supposed to get that fixed this year, aren't they? Or something? supposed to be on the schedule. I just wondered if they're going to widen the shoulders or what. I wonder if the governor traveled on it on his way to Charles City from here a few weeks ago. I bet he didn't. Should have. It's a state road. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you he didn't. See how our county roads, you know what I mean? We're saving them. How long do I have to say? We'll come up with a lot of questions for uh, Jeff Heil next week. We're going to be part of the key to this whole thing. So. Nothing else? Why we will stand adjourned at uh, 20.